Okay, you're very welcome to Bet Bright Towers. We're here to discuss the business end of the World Cup 2018. It's been a fantastic tournament in Russia so far. Uh, we're going to kick off with a discussion about how England got on against Colombia. Of course, they are now through to uh, an epic quarterfinal to come against Sweden. But the Colombia game, one of the most difficult tests perhaps they might face in a World Cup. But they are through. Penalty shootout as well. Um, is football coming home, Peter? We can start to dream now. Okay. Um, I think the Colombia game is a big conversation which is open up for debate. Um, it's great to finally win on penalties um, after I think it was 22 long years. In the first World Cup penalty shootout we won. It's important to celebrate that but at the same time I think there are a few cracks that when I was watching it certainly appeared uh, throughout the game. Um, and so my main concern now going forward is you know we didn't really look like a threat going forward. Um, I, other than the penalty I'm not sure um, we created too many clear-cut chances. Um, and so I think that's something that we need to really focus on going forward in the, in the tournament. Um, but that being said, we've got to celebrate the good times. Um, we can start to dream about uh, winning the World Cup. I think it was a bit premature yep. uh, after beating Panama and Tunisia. But um, I think we can now think it is a, re you know, it is a reality. Um, and the draw has done us massive favours as well. Well, it has. Uh, you mentioned a problem that England might have is open play, attacking an open play. Perhaps it hasn't come together for them. Dermot, the hype train is going to roll and roll with England while they're still in the tournament and obviously they didn't play too many hard games in that group stage, a couple of weak teams and a B team against Belgium, but Colombia was a real test. Yeah, well, like, firstly, look, it has to, be, has to be stated that, of course, England fans are going to run away with themselves They're in the quarterfinal of the World Cup. Before the World Cup, England fans would have snapped your hand off for this. You know, the chances are massive now to get to a semi-final, which that's a huge World Cup for any country. Just the way it's opened up now, that probably isn't really good enough now. Uh, to get to a final is probably where England should be aiming, but it can't be stated how bad Colombia were. Like, Colombia were, for 80 minutes, decided they were just going to try and kick England off the pitch. They decided they weren't going to play football. And England, from play for me, did not make enough chances. I thought Eric Dyer was a terrible substitution. He, look, he ended up scoring the winning penalty. He ended up uh, nearly scoring a header, but the end doesn't justify the means there with him. Um, he just doesn't look at it. He's a splendid footballer, but just hasn't shown up this World Cup at all at all. Um, substitutions were a bit slow, I thought it was odd bringing Rashford on. I just think when people keep praising Southgate for having such confidence in this team as he should, but then why not bring on Loftus-Cheek and Rashford in the second half and kill a really poor Colombia team? We only decided with 10 minutes left. Like. Game management is something that Southgate's almost having to learn the job though. In yeah, no, I get that. I know completely. he's done it with the underage groups. Um, Adam, I come to you. In terms of England have got over a few kind of hoodoos in this World Cup already through a group stage, last 16 game goes to a penalty shootout. I think what Southgate's been able to do is get everyone a bit of game time. It's important. Maybe there are a few rusty players there, but in terms of is football coming home, which was the first question I posed, is it coming home? Yeah, I think as the World Cup's gone on, it's kind of gone from this could happen to slowly getting to the stage where actually thinking that it will happen. Um, I think the Belgium game could end up being the best thing that's happened to England. Not only for the fact that it meant that they ended up on the, the good side of the draw, but it gave Southgate a chance to you know blood in some of the younger players, give them a bit of World Cup experience, guys like Loftus-Cheek and, and guys like that. So. Fair enough, it wasn't the most intense game, uh, but it is still a bit of experience in the World Cup finals for them. Um, so, I mean, there's everybody, everybody in the squad pretty much has had a kick of a World Cup football now at this stage. As, as the guys have said, the draw has opened up. I don't see, <coughs> excuse me, I don't see anything, anything really standing in the way of England getting to at least the semi final, uh, potentially against Croatia. If you offered England that start of the tournament, Croatia in the semi final of a World Cup, you'd take it. Um, and at that stage of World Cup, anything can happen. but. Yeah, it's, it's definitely looking more, more and more likely as the days go by. We've touched on it already and mentioned Southgate's approach to this tournament. It's something that started a couple of years ago with the way he's decided to try and play the ball from the back, which an England team hasn't done for many, many years. Probably go back to Venables when he allowed uh, defenders to make passes from, from the back you know, of the pitch. And I think he must be feeling somewhat vindicated that his style of football, his patient passing game, seems to be rubbing off on a group of players that look like they enjoy playing that way. Yeah, I mean the I mean the guys the three the three centre halves in England they're playing. I mean I know Harry Kane is or Harry Harry Kane uh, Carl Walker is playing out of position at, yeah. at centre half, but he's very comfortable on the ball. And at the end of the day, granted he's not used to playing in the centre, but he is still a defender by trade. Mm -hmm. Harry Maguire is a converted centre midfielder playing in uh, playing at centre half, and John Stones is as comfortable on the ball as, as any defender at the World Cup. So yeah. I mean, 
it's a very solid base for, for England to be kind of just to be able to even control games, let alone start attacks. But I mean, if you have if you have defenders that are comfortable on the ball, it's it's a great foundation for the rest of the team. We're talking about well, Dermot mentioned it that England probably before the tournament would have taken a quarter final as a successful campaign. Now the way that the draw has opened up and the way Southgate has conducted himself and the team has conducted himself to this point, you don't think that would be enough? Like if you were to score Southgate out of 10 right now, say ended against Sweden, what score would you give him, Demo? Where do you think he has to get to now, given the positioning? The semi-final is the bare minimum now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, England still don't exactly have this. This team hasn't enamoured me enough to suggest that they're, uh, there's a God-given right to beat Sweden. Um, it's not a God-given right whatsoever. Um, it was suggested after the match as well by Gareth Southgate after the last game that it was like a scene from The Walking Dead after the game. You know, like an awful lot of the English players were hurt, they were they were limping, etc. But they should beat Sweden. But there is no absolutely no God-given right that they will. Um, but they get to the semi-final against Croatia. I, I think Croatia is a slightly better team than England. But we're not talking about a Brazil. We're talking about England. But semi-finals, I would I would suggest Dean should be where they're aiming for. And you would give then at that point all credit to Southgate for having a good campaign if they could make the semi-finals regardless of what happens then after that point. The end justifies the means to that. Yeah. I think he'll deservedly, I do, I, I'm still not convincing him from a substitution point of view or a game management point of view, but from a PR standpoint, they almost use a propaganda throughout this whole thing of he's turned a general England team that were uh, bemoaned by your public generally, uh, people didn't like them to arguably Gareth Southgate now is the most popular uh, figure in in England. Yeah, like, people already call him yeah. Sir Gareth Southgate. Yeah. Is that, that's, that's, that's where it's going to end up if it goes well, Pete. I think, well, if we win the World Cup, it's going to be... Oh, well, there's no question. Of course. No question. Um, I think you're spot on there, though. Um, PR-wise, he's managed the press perfectly. The players conducted themselves in a fantastic manner. He's kept Jamie Vardy away. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but we've got a history with penalties, and we've not got the best history of penalties. And quite easily, the, the penalty shootouts are so tense, they're so tight, that it's the difference between two kicks at the end of the day and we could quite easily have been sitting here having another uh, conversation of where it went wrong for England. Yeah. I don't want to focus too much on the negatives because uh, as I say we've got to enjoy the good times yeah. but as Demo said particularly the subs we made two subs in normal time in 90 minutes now someone who the only shining light from the Iceland game when we were knocked out two years ago was Marcus Rashford who looked like the only player to me during that game when he came on with I think it was 10 minutes to go he looked like he wanted to actually be proactive and make a dif difference in the game and I was sitting there watching the game thinking bring Rashford on, kill the game, going for the jugular. Yep. But he waited and he waited and he waited and eventually we didn't see the game out. We conceded an extra time. And I just sat there with my head, head in my hands thinking, here we go again, it's just another England performance. Um, luckily, we were on the right side of a penalty shootout and it all went right in the end. But I think genuinely I would have been sitting there saying, where were the changes? He needed to be more tac tactically astute mm -hmm. um, and proactive during the game. Yep. But again, let's enjoy being in the quarterfinal of well, the World right. Cup. By hook or by crook, he's got England into a quarter-final and they're 4-1 to one with Bet Bright to win the World Cup outright. Would anyone think we'd be in that position three weeks ago? No. Um. No. I don't think, you can't. So Southgate at that point, whether he engineered the result against Belgium and it worked out for him and he'd given everyone a bit of time, he's got lessons to learn still. Yes. But at this point, he must be getting an A start. It depends what happens maybe. In you, as you say, it's the cliche, but it is true. You can only play what's put in front of you. Um, that being said, we should be in a semi-final next week because we're playing Sweden and I know it's played on grass, but on paper we've got a better team than Sweden, we've got a better side than Sweden. Um, so we should be, in theory, playing in a semi-final next, or quarter-final, in a semi-final next yeah. week, excuse me. Okay. Um, okay, well, mid-term report then. Looks like Gareth Southgate's on course for an A.